So this Saturday we have the circus of a fight between Chris Eubank Jr. and Conor Ben taking place at the O2 Arena in London. Now, you guys can probably guess and imagine what I'm going to predict for this fight. But you know what? It's the biggest fight. It's the biggest fight on this Saturday. So let's indulge, shall we? And let's uh, see what conclusion we come to. Now, as I say, this is a circus of fight because it's really it's just bizarre. You have an untested welterweight in Conor Ben moving up ten pounds from 147 to 157, a catch weight to fight Chris Eubank Jr. So we have an untested welterweight moving up one and a half weight classes to fight an untested, not not untested, but maybe a, a middleweight who has failed to stamp his authority on the middleweight division. Of course, Chris Eubank Jr. had his excursion to super middleweight, which was even less successful because he's two most high profile fights at super middleweight were George Groves and James DeGale. And George Groves, he lost that fight pretty thoroughly. Um, and that was a fight where many people actually expected him to, to win, but I personally didn't. And look, I didn't have my channel back then, so you just have to take my word for it. But I always felt that George Groves would just be too big, too powerful, and too skilled when you think about it. Uh, James DeGale, I... I don't know, I was worried for James DeGale going into that one because he had looked so poor against Caleb Truax. He'd really taken a shellacking in the first fight against Truax and then just barely scraped by to get his title back in the rematch. And he was completely shot going into the Eubank Jr. fight. And look, Eubank Jr. did what he had to do. But as I say, Eubank Jr. has fallen short in his career, mostly because he has, I think it's fair to say he's frozen under the lights when it's really mattered most against Billy Joe Saunders and George Groves. <clears throat> and now he was able to, I feel, impose himself earlier and a bit more against Billy Joe Saunders because Billy Joe Saunders doesn't necessarily have the offensive prowess that George Groves does. Now, people, I feel like they still kind of underestimate George Groves in terms of his offensive prowess, but also his power. We have to consider that George Groves was a big super middleweight. And George Groves, with the jab and the straight right, was... Pfft, he had smoke in those punches. And Eubank Jr. was able to stand up to them for the most part. I think he still felt the effects, but Eubank Jr.'s got heart. He's got that kind of grit and determination. But it was, I think, his mentality early in that fight, but also his technique. Because when we look at Eubank Jr., uh, when I look at Eubank Jr., I see someone who is trying to add a few more wrinkles to his game, especially since he joined uh, he joined teams with uh, Roy Jones Jr. But you can see that Eubank Jr. just doesn't have the pedigree. And I'm talking his long-range boxing. It's very janky. It's very awkward. And for someone who's athletic, and, and Eubank Jr. is athletic, he's very stiff. And I think that a lot of that stiffness pause a lot of that stiffness comes from his uh unfamiliarity with the technique that he's trying to use we see he tries to be a bit more disciplined these days at long range and you know he tries to send his hands out like a probe and try to take up that space at long range and it's look it's the right thing to do it's better than doing nothing but you can still see there's um there's some um, lack of proficiency there and I don't think he's really been come up against someone who's been able to challenge him. Because if we look since 2019, December of 2019, he's only fought three times. He fought twice in 2021, firstly against Marcus Morrison. Marcus Morrison is washed up. That's just it. Like he was once upon a time a kind of touted prospect, maybe for like British or European level. But he's a gatekeeper by this point. And that fight went uh, went 10 rounds. It was a UD f win for Eubank Jr. But Eubank Jr. carried Morrison. He could have got him out there several occasions. But he didn't. He then came up against uh, Wanik Avdian. Now, Avdian, I believe, was is listed as an orthodox. But he came out southpaw. And even he was able to time 
Eubank Jr. Be, uh, at long range, especially when he was splitting the jab. He was able to, to time Eubank Jr. Eubank Jr. I don't think has the subtle... He doesn't understand the subtleties of boxing that much, uh, at least at long range. He then fought Liam Williams. And I can't knock Chris Eubank Jr. for beating Williams or fighting Williams and beating him in the start in the fashion he did because I was calling for that fight. I said that Eubank Jr., rather than just calling out Golovkin, calling out Canelo and then not fighting anyone, he should fight a top contender. And Liam Williams had just come off of the fight against Andrade. Eubank Jr. went in there and pretty much demolished Williams. But even then, Williams was having some success, once again, time in Eubank Jr. Um, I think Williams just didn't have the size. You have to remember, this is someone coming up from uh, like middleweight. And also the chin of Liam Williams just looked atrocious in that fight. And I understand, like, Eubank Jr., he's got some pop, he's got some speed especially. But, yeah, you, Liam Williams, I feel like he left his punch resistance in the Andrade fight. Because that, that was a torrid fight for him. So Eubank Jr., I don't think he's really come up against someone who can expose his shortcomings at long range. <clears throat> um, is Conor Ben going to be that guy? Oh, let's get on to it. Conor Ben is... For my money, this is just my opinion, but I think he is a better technical fighter, a better all-round fighter than Eubank Jr. is at this stage. And now people have, may take exception to that. And I'm not trying to say that Conor Ben is perfect. I don't, I'm not trying to say he's the next coming of, you know, Terence Crawford at welterweight. No. But when I look at uh, Conor Ben's technique... I see it being a bit more refined, someone who's had a bit more practice and has practiced different uh, styles of fighting in terms of fighting coming forward, fighting coming backwards. Uh, not to say that he can do everything perfectly, he can't, but there's just a bit more polish, I think, there. And I think maybe as a, an all-round fighter, maybe Conor Ben is just a bit more talented. I like the way Conor Ben comes forward. He's been using his jab quite well. He's developed some good head movement. And I think his punching mechanics are actually quite solid. And for a small guy, because he's got good technique, he's able to really get some, some decent power into his shots. And now he's been fighting lower tier opposition, former champions, former contenders at welterweight. But he's been cleaning them out. He's been cleaning them out. You can't deny that. However, I feel like there is... You know, going up from the the fringe and former contenders and former champions of welterweight up to a guy in Eubank Jr. who's at middleweight. And yeah, he's limited, but he does have some skill and he's athletic and he's a big guy. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too um too high on Conor Ben's chances of winning this fight. Because you know, I sound like I've just been slating Chris Eubank Jr. for the past however long. But <clears throat> with Chris Eubank Jr., his best work is done at close range on the inside. When At long range, Chris Eubank Jr. leaves a lot to be desired. But at, lo at close range, in the pocket, he is ferocious. And so that's the thing. That's where the intrigue comes from with Chris Eubank Jr.'s fights. It's, okay, if he's able to get in range against this guy, you know, whoever, so-and-so... How are they going to deal with him? Because he really is a bit of a dynamo at that that short punching range on the inside. And there's actually quite a bit of culture. Because for those of you who don't know, Chris Eubank Jr. spent a lot of his amateur career working with um, Mike McCallum. And Mike McCallum, one of the most underrated champions in boxing history was a great inside fighter, had a great ability to to roll and slip on the inside, but not just evasively, but because he was able to work his offense into their body, head, especially with the body shots. I mean, he was nicknamed the body snatcher. And you can see some of that influence. You can see some of that culture and that wisdom in what Eubank Jr. does, where especially with the right uppercut, he's able to, to pin your guard with his left shoulder and pin your 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 gloves to your head and just find a way to slot that uppercut right in and then from the uppercut he's able to chain off left hooks 
And then usually when he goes from the left hook, he can chain off a right hand and then he can go to the body. So Eubank Jr. on the inside really is a, a force to be reckoned with. But it's always the question of how is he going to get there? Is he going to get there? Because we saw against George Groves that George Groves was too formidable. He had too much control at long range with the jab, the time into the right hand. And, and, and Eubank Jr. froze because he was completely at odds. He, he was lost. He had no idea what he was doing because he hasn't drilled that long range boxing. But will Conor Ben be able to do that? Will he be able to keep... Excuse me, I'm just readjusting. Will he be able to keep Chris Eubank Jr. at the end of a jab, at the end of a right hand? I think it's unlikely. And I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure how this fight unfolds, if I'm totally honest. I have an idea of the result, but I'm not sure how it unfolds because I think in an ideal world... Chris Eubank Jr., as we've seen many times throughout his career, he wants his opponent to come with him. He'll want Conor Ben to do his best, not Mike Tyson impression, but he, he wants him to pressure him because it makes Eubank Jr.'s job easier because all he has to do is kind of basically wait for Conor Ben to get into range and then he can just look to time him, maybe slip and then land an uppercut and, and really work from there. And I suspect that that's maybe what Conor Ben will do. I think Conor Ben will kind of maybe take the initiative and think, okay, I've had success with my jab. I've had success with my head movement. Let me try and bring it to you, Bank, in, in bursts. And you know what? I, I'm not expecting Conor Ben to win, but I, I'm expecting him to do better than many people expect. And I think he probably will land on Eubank Jr. Maybe a few jabs here and there, a few right hands here and there. Maybe make Eubank Jr. look a little bit clumsy. Because, yes, Conor Ben has a significant size disadvantage in this fight. Probably a significant reach disadvantage. Weight? I'm not sure. Maybe. It depends, I think, how Ben has prepared for this fight. But, <clears throat> you know, sometimes size isn't everything. Now, size is important, but sometimes there are actually benefits to being a smaller man. For the most part, you're most likely going to have better balance, be quicker in terms of just your full body movement, better reflexes, sometimes better stamina, uh, but also you're a smaller target as well. Now, that's twofold because if you're a smaller person, you're most likely not going to be as strong and therefore someone like Eubank Jr., who can be quite physical, would probably look to manhandle you, especially when you're up against the ropes. But, you know, for the most part, I think that Conor Ben is going to be quick enough and sharp enough to, to time Eubank Jr., particularly with the jab, because I don't, I don't think Chris Eubank Jr.'s jab is varied enough. It's, it's quick, yes, he uses his athleticism, but it's not educated. I don't think he... He kind of throws it like a... How can I say it? He, you know, he goes for that kind of machine gun jab type stuff you know, throwing it out as fast as he can, as many times as he can. At the highest level, not to say that this is the highest level, but when you're fighting up against decent opponents, that kind of stuff doesn't have the success you'd maybe expect from it. Um, once again, kind of going back to the uh, lack of long-range boxing proficiency from Eubank Jr. But yeah, I think Eubank Jr. is probably going to take a couple of punches, but I think knowing his character, he's going to try and play it off and play to the crowd like, oh, I meant to let him hit me kind of thing. Um, but then I do think that given the size disadvantage, uh, the size that Eubank Jr. is bringing into this fight, it means that Conor Ben has to work so much harder to, 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 to be com competitive, even though I personally see him as a more well-rounded boxer. Um, and so that being said... I don't see Conor Ben's offense really being that damaging, even though it may look like it is or maybe look like or maybe make Eubank Jr. look a bit clumsy at times. <clears throat> I just think that it gets to a point where Eubank Jr. starts to feel comfortable and he starts to just line up too many shots, particularly on the, uh, on the inside, those hooks, those uppercuts especially. And I'm not sure if the head movement of Conor Ben, as I talked about, I don't think that's going to be enough to to allow him to see up the fight. And I think it gets to a point where 
rounds eight, nine or ten, maybe he just really starts to feel the the accumulated damage and probably you know, I think Conor Ben probably gets stopped in his feet. I think his corner will throw the towel in. Truth be told, I think he gets to like round nine or ten. They chuck the towel in, he's probably going to be busted up, you know, bleeding, swollen eyes, stuff like that. That's just how I envision it envisage it. <clears throat> so yeah, I think, you know, it's I think it's gonna be a laugh. It's probably gonna be slightly entertaining while it lasts. And um nevertheless, there is my prediction. I don't think I'm missing anything. Chris Eubank Jr. winning. I'm going to go rounds 9 or 10. Conor Ben being stopped on his feet. Uh, his corner probably thrown in the towel. And then, uh, yeah, onwards and upwards. People are going to ask the potential, or they're going to ask the question, is it, do you think Eubank Jr. has overlooked Conor Ben? Potentially. Potentially. But do I see Eubank Jr. freezing in this fight? No. I, I genuinely think that he truly believes that he walks through Conor Ben. I don't think he really senses much of a threat. And I don't think there's going to be any kind of realisation when he's in a ring and any kind of freezing. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it will be Eubank Jr. doing what Eubank Jr. does. Um, and he'll probably try and take credit for the win after the fight, even though he's saying that He's supposed to obliterate Conor Ben. And he's supposed to do that. And he's supposed to, if he loses, he's finished. Yeah, knowing uh, Eubank Jr., how he's presented himself in the public eye over the years, I, I sense that he's still going to look to get some kind of credit for beating Conor Ben. But um, hey, we'll we'll wait and see until the fight is uh, done and dusted. All right, people, uh, that is all from me for this one. What do you think of this fight? Are you looking forward to it? <laughs> Dare I say? Are you um, in agreement with me? Do you think Chris Eubank Jr. has this one very much in the bag? Or are you picking Conor Ben to uh, shock the boxing world? Leave it down below and I'll get back to you. And as always, for now, thank you for listening and I'll catch you in the next video.